name is Tom, uh, aka ZLF from Street Fighter 4 Reddit. Um, I am one of the original developers of the first combo trainer, and for the past six months I've basically been making Framecraft, which is the successor to the combo trainer. Um, I got asked by a few users uh, just to PN me to do a very quick preview um, and a little bit of description of what Framecraft is, what its features are, how to use it, etc., so and so forth. So here is the video. Uh, if you don't already have it, you can actually get Frametrap from the website, frametrap.com. Just made a little preview for it uh, on there. It's currently in beta, so please excuse any bugs. And uh, if you find any bugs, you can send them to tpiddock at gmail.com. Uh, that's my dev email address, so you can just send it straight to there. Big red button at the top, download Frametrap will get you the executable. If you're interested in the source code, you've got two zip files there which you can get it from, or you can view it on GitHub. And if you are actually a developer, please feel free to get in contact and actually contribute to the project. Uh, the original contributors are actually on the page themselves. Uh, scroll down, we can actually see you've got a few features here on the website, so if you want a quick read view, please go through. We've got some developers. The original guy who made the uh, combo trainer, Necrophagus, he's on there as well. So please give them a visit, give them support and uh, feel free to contribute if you can. Um, but basically if you download Frametrap from the website, uh, if you open up the zip file itself once you've got it, it's only about 14 meg, um, that inc doesn't include Street Fighter unfortunately, uh, but you'll see that you've got the Frametrap folder, if we just bring it up on the screen, uh, you'll be able to go into the main folder called Frametrap, it will have the version number, execute Frametrap.exe and that will bring up the actual app itself. So going into the app, this is Frametrapped. Now uh, the intro screen is just a little bit of a placeholder here, at the moment it doesn't do anything, it will have a uh, recent files list so you can look through your most recent files, um, stuff like if you've got a bread and butter combo for a bookie, you should see that down the side there. Um, now there are two main features to Frametrapped at the moment. First one is actually where Frame Trap comes from. Is a project I was doing about a year ago when I first got into Street Fighter, thanks to some guys called Rushdown Edinburgh. That's where I live at the moment, who got me into the game. So, basically, this is what it looks like at the moment. If I just take my wonderful mug away, so we've got Ryu here, and all of his moves. Uh, essentially, missing a couple of them at the moment. His super and ultras aren't in there but you can see basically all of the frame data for his move. So if I hover over this one here, you can actually see it's a block type is mid for his close jab, and you can see his damage is 30, stun is 50, 20 meter gain. You can actually see what it cancels into as well, and there are any notes if you actually find any for any kinds of moves. For example, his close fierce actually forces stand, um, does less damage on stun for the third and fifth frames. Uh, that might be his crouching long, is it? No, his crouching fierce does the same, but it actually does it for individual hits as well so for example if we scroll down to his angled jumped strong we can actually see that it has both the information for uh, his first hit and his second so if we look at the notes it says legs projectile invincible and then it says second hit knockdown and can juggle now the graphics say that you've actually got the ability to perform this using a medium punch so if I highlight that medium punch and the direction is going to be forward jump now at the moment it isn't enabled, but you will be able to add these to a timeline. So once the frame trap data is actually finished, I'm actually having to do this manually, so I'd be happy for contributors to help me out with this one. Um, but once you add it to the timeline, that will take it to this, which is the combo trainer itself. Now, this is where the magic happens. Now, at the moment it uh, is very basic layout, so it will improve with time. Um, but the layout itself is on the left hand side is the timeline. What we can do is we've got an interface which you can fully interact with to do directional inputs and the press button inputs for your punches and your kicks. Now you can see actually he's put them in a little display at the top so you can actually add in new ones and as you add in more inputs you get nice graphics showing you what you've actually put in along the way. So if we just uh, clear these away, what we'll do is we'll actually load up Street Fighter. Now one of the big differences from the old one is that this one will actually load up Street Fighter and embed it into the panel within the application. Uh, so once it's recognized that Street Fighter has loaded, it will host it inside the panel. So here we go, let's just start up Street Fighter, get through to where we need to be. Do tell me if it's too loud. Okay. So the idea being is that because we've actually been able to host Street Fighter 4, 
inside the application this enables us to Once this is loading, we can actually still go back to the Street Fighter library. We can even group it by move type if we want to. We can actually uh, group them down so we can see all the unique moves. But we can still actually select these, look at the information, and switch back to the combo trainer at any point. The game is still running in the background. Everybody's happy. Brilliant. So, now if I want to actually do a move for Ibuki, let's just say it's uh, a target combo. We can set her up in the game. I'm currently using. Uh, my arcade stick at the moment, so it can still work with your arcade stick as long as you click on the window to the left. So let's just give her some inputs. We'll go for her target combo. So give it a bit of weight. You use the slider down the bottom to give them weight frames. So for each of these inputs, you can give it a, a certain amount of time for which it's holding those buttons. You've got the arrows on the side, so you can increment them by one or two on either input. So when I click on play, it will switch to the game and then try out the combo. Now you can see I've done it far too quickly there. It's done all the punches in really quick succession, so it should actually give it about 10 frames on each of these. Cool. So let's move it closer. Click play. Brilliant! Target combo comes out. Now, uh, this would be a little bit annoying if you couldn't save it, so we actually have the ability to save these as well. So you can actually see I've actually got all of Ibuki's trials here and ready to go. Let's just say I wanted to give her a target combo, let's just save that, I think it's target combo 4. Now it's, uh, its own file type is CMB for combo, um, you can actually just send these to your friends and share it as raw text as well, just as long as you save it as a CMB file you can load it into the timeline. Now the old combo trainer used a, uh, a different file version, that doesn't matter, we've actually accounted Right, so, uh, sorry about that guys, the broadcast kind of uh, screwed up halfway through, I think my internet dropped, so uh, I've got the local recording saved, so I'll just rebroadcast whenever available, um, but here's a quick rebroadcast because we were halfway through one of the target combos uh, when we were doing this, so with frame traps you actually use uh, the displays down the side to not only compose what the move's going to do but also so you can toggle whether you can hear it or not. Now this little button here, if I just expand the app, you've got this Wii button on the side here to toggle whether that particular move makes a sound. So we can actually just toggle these off for now and just play the move. Brilliant. Okay, so this is her far target combo, so we just have to uh, push her in the right position. But what we'll do is we can actually toggle these um, buttons, which are the little volume keys down the side, and hopefully if I've got her in the right position, uh, it will actually play it for us after a wee little delay. Okay, let's try that again. Excellent, there we go, so a target combo played there and it actually gives us a little sound cues so we can get the timing right. So, so you can basically try and play these back to yourself. I'm just going to try and use the timing that I hear right now. So, that's it. There we go. I was not pressing forward there like an idiot. But um, so, so I can actually use those timings. I don't know if you can hear my arcade stick at the moment to um, to basically practice what that uh, that move is meant to be. So if I play it back again, excellent. So let's give her a shot. So I can then just use that to, to essentially train my muscle memory. So once I've actually trained my muscle memory, um, it gets a lot easier to do combos. Um, 
you can practice ridiculous things. Uh, so let's say you want to practice the 42 combo string for Sakura. I haven't made it yet, um, but once I do, you'd be able to then turn on the individual uh, moves, including directions. You can do directions and press inputs, and also empty wait ones as well. So if you want to, uh, for example, do a release of a key, uh, you can actually play that as well. So if we just turn on that one, it's a different sound, so it should play it. It's a little beep there, and that basically will give you the cue when you're meant to release a key instead of press it. If we go into open timeline, let's choose her target combo 20. Let's go, uh, sorry, her trials 21. Now, uh, here we've got a bit of setup. So, if I click on play, there'll be a two second delay. And she'll go for it. Okay, so this one looks like it's been set up for the corner, because of course there's different timings for each one. Let's try that again. Cool, so it looks like it actually doesn't work because we need to adjust the timing. So if we go through to this one, we actually missed after the jump in. So what I can do is actually reduce the amount of time it takes for the jump in itself. Let's reduce that to 15 frames, so she's got enough time to land. Shift it forward and try again. Okay, that was too quick there. So let's try that again. So we give it 20 frames timing. So this is basically how you compose your uh, your combos is you can just play them from here, try them out if they don't work, just tweak each individual input. And once you play it, the changes will be involved the next time she tries to do it. Brilliant. So, as you can see, when we run through this, we can actually adjust any of the inputs on the timeline, including just adding in extra inputs for the buttons for the kicks and punches. You can do the directions as well. But, for example, we can change this one so that she's doing an EX at the end instead of just the normal uh, bike Brilliant. Now, let's save that as a separate one. So, we've got her target combo. Which one was that one? That was 21. With EX ending. So this is how you save and load your files. You can actually load up uh, and append files. So if we've got some of her basic moves, like this is her neck breaker. Brilliant. With her neck breaker, we can actually add in a nice big weight uh, at the beginning or at the end. Whenever you add in an input, it'll add it after the position that you've got selected. So her input there was at uh, the beginning, you can add it at the beginning, you can remove whatever you've selected. So let's give it a nice big weight here and then add in some more. So we're going to make a jump forward and then we'll do a hakunai and see how it works. Okay, need more bit of a delay on that. Brilliant. So, you can see where you can compose these uh, using the icons on the left hand side, and once you've saved them, you will actually be able to save these in a format which hopefully one of the features I'm going to add is making it shareable with um, the same markdown that you use on Reddit. So once you've composed a combo, let's say you want to share on Reddit, brilliant, you just paste out the combos and it'll be able to uh, put in the macros for the, the right sort of move displays on Reddit, so you can do your nice uh, displays there. But basically, that's that's how it works. That's um, that's essentially it. Uh, you can actually append to the timeline. So if you want to add in extra stuff, you can actually just append it onto the end and uh, load it separately. So you don't just clear the timeline. So this way, you can actually save segments of a move uh, into individual files and then go from there. So I'm actually broadcasting this at the moment. Um, I've just had a question come in about 32-bit uh, and 64-bit because uh, we had an issue with that. It is currently 64-bit only, but it will be sorted out um, in the near future. Hopefully it's just because of the libraries I had to import for the project itself. Um, currently the Street Fighter library itself only has Ryu in there with the frame data. I'm having to rewrite it, but it's based off shoryuken.com and uh, Event Hub's frame data is what I'm using to actually get it. Uh, the Street Fighter wiki as well is helping a lot. Um, but all of the characters will be involved. I'm also planning to get this Ultra Street Fighter 4 
um, ready for when uh, the actual game comes out because we're pretty close to that now. Um, but that's basically the preview. Uh, so give me your feedback. You can send it to me at uh, tpiddock at gmail.com. Um, I'll put the link in the description as well. I'll link into the Reddit post so you can all give me some feedback. But that's basically it. Um, leave me a comment, like the video, show me some feedback on Reddit, download it, try it out. Any of the features that you think you need to add to the app, let me know because the more that you give me feedback, the better I can make it for you. So I hope you've enjoyed the preview. Um, let me know how you think. Thank you.